stopped Simon from school. Well, I've not come to see Peter. I've just brought the last of his stuff. Have I missed something? Oh, what, you mean like how he skipped rehab and went sailing around the world with another woman for the last couple of weeks? I miss that. Yeah, well, the upshot is I dumped him last night and I'm leaving town today. In fact, I've got a cab booked in about an hour. How could I have missed this? Does Norris know? I don't think so. Oh, that's made me feel a bit better. <sighs> right, well, I'd best be off then. Uh, hang on. Look, I know you're both a bit over keen on the dark side, but I thought you made a lovely couple. Yeah, me too. Do me a favour. What? Have a cup of tea and tell me all the details. <sighs> I hate being out of the loop. Ten minutes. Excellent. You put the kettle on. I'm just going to get a cardy. It's a bit nippy. Peter, where are you? That's it. Show me your sad face. That's good. That's good. All right, you make me proud, son. Good lad. What's going on? Simon's on a mission. What, what kind of mission? I've got to get the tea on. Deirdre, this is more important than tea, OK? Trust me. Right, best be off. I've got this taxi book. Yes, but... Hello. Where did you come from? From school. Where's your dad? He's waiting outside. Oh. Is he? Please don't go. I'm sorry, Simon. I have to. We love you. Yeah, and I love you too. My dad's really sorry. He promises he won't mess things up again. He says we can go to Orton Towers if you stay. Did he say I could come and all? No, just me and Liel. It's not a bad offer. Simon, I really wish I could stay, but I just can't. Hey, but listen, it's not your fault, you know. It's just sometimes. Things don't work out, that's all. That was a cheap trick. Well, I'll stoop as low as I have to. Look, I'll get down on my knees and I'll beg, if you like. I'm not proud, only... Come on, Lee, just give us another chance, eh? Ready when you are, babe. Lee. Look, we had something really special. Don't just throw it away. Let me make it up to you. Have you been drinking? Well, you say the words and I will never drink again. I cross my heart and I hope to die. Do you know what? You just made this a whole lot easier. Look, Lee, please. It's not just me you're punishing, it's Simon as well. Come here, you. Oh. I'll see you, Jan. You be careful, yeah? Yeah, I'll come and see you soon. Listen, Simon, si, I'm going now. Look after your daddy for me, won't you? Please don't go. I have to, sweetheart. Can we come and visit? What's going on? Shh. Lee, please don't do this. Don't. If you go, I won't get to go to Orton Towers. <laughs> yeah, you will. Of course you will. Because your daddy loves you, don't you? And you'll take him to Orton Towers, won't you? Of course I will. Are you going to wait to me now? Yeah. I'll see you soon. Come on, let's go. Garage. So what's happening now? Fancy finding out your fella's gone off with some floozy on a boat. Adds a whole new meaning to messing about on the water. Well, um, I don't know what to say. In my experience, if you're unsure about what to say, say an out. It's Simon I feel sorry for. I know. Leanne was brilliant with him. Oh, come on. She was hardly super nanny. Why is it, as parents, we always feel party to blame? You shouldn't feel like that, Ken. Thanks. I'm not so sure on that score. 
if Kenneth hadn't procreated with that Valerie and had their Peter, Peter wouldn't have broken Leanne Battersby's heart, so it is his fault in a way. Thank you, Blanche. My pleasure. Well, by that reasoning, it must be partly your fault that our trace is in prison. No, that's yours. My rationale only drops a generation. Well, anyway, leave Ken alone. He's done nothing wrong. What were that series where everyone slept with each other and they lived on boats? Always had trouble cramming their shoulder pads in the cabins. How it's where? Beautiful piece of television. Ooh, nasty gash. Well, another chance is to give him a job. It's up to Steve. You could put in a good word. I'll think about it. Would you like a refill in there, love? Oh, you're all right, Liz. Look, this is ridiculous. You can't keep pretending that we never happened. What happened? Sorry, my memory's not what it used to be. It must be my age. Ouch, that's telling him. <laughs> Do you remember that job we were talking about? Look, all I'm asking for is five minutes. You, my lady, are a vision. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> Might I ask the occasion, or is this for my benefit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should be so lucky. No, it's Becky's end night, so I'm taking her out for dinner. So it's still happening, then? Of course. I knew I shouldn't have taken that bet. What bet? Blanche reckoned they wouldn't make it to the altar. That is terrible. Too flaming right it is. I'm going to be light 20 pounds. Ka-ching! <laughs> oh, I'm having nothing to do with this. What can I get you? Rum and pineapple. Met that too. Yeah, look, next time, love. Do you know what? I'll have some of that bet. You want to bet against the wedding occurring? Well, it is Becky. Crazy things have happened. Oh, I wouldn't argue with that. Oh, the block's your mate. Look, do you want it or not? You lot better make sure that Steve doesn't find out or there'll be hell to pit. Becky. Well, thanks a lot, Lloyd. Do you know how I was wrong about you two? Cos you are... you're made for each other. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Who wants to increase that bet, then? I know I've not. Tonight is off. I take it from the state of you, you've told Steve about the bet. Didn't have much choice. He's lucky he's still breathing. This is all your flame and fault. Oh, what have you been up to now? Nothing. You only opened a book on whether the wedding would happen or not. Don't you ever learn? I'm a facilitator. <clears throat> it's all right, you can put your heart out away. I'm not here for that. Steve. I think I'll do the talking, if that's all right. You're both barred from the wedding. Steve, oh, come on, love, you don't mean that. Do you want to bet? Oh, look, come on, man. I'm in the wrong. Don't blame your mum. This isn't about blame. It's about common decency, respect, and something you two know nothing about. That's not fair. Oh, come on, until a couple of days ago, you wouldn't give Becky the time of day. Now, I don't much care what you all think about my bride-to-be. Well, I do, but unfortunately, it's a free country when it comes to that. No, what bothers me is that none of you will give her the benefit of the doubt. None of you! And seeing as if you're not going to hear my little speech tomorrow, I'll give you the highlights, shall I? I love Becky. Simple as that. And all the stuff that you lot think is so wrong about her is completely right for me. And I really wish that you lot could see that. But you can't. Which is your loss, not hers. Somehow I don't reckon I'll be forgetting this moment in a hurry. Oh, they were touching. Come on then, crazy girl. Let's go and finish that game of Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
So what are we looking for, Blanche? Because I've got red, I've got white, I've got rosé. I've got dessert and sweet and dry. We've got sparkling. We've got old world, new world and up and coming. Um, under two pounds. Under two pounds? Under two pounds, may I direct you towards the vinegar? It's the middle aisle, second shelf down, next to the pickled onions. I'm on a fixed income. Besides, it's not for me. It's a peace offering. Yeah, well, as peace offering go, a two-pound bottle of wine's right up there with the invasion of Poland, Blanche. I'm not spending fortunes on Becky Granger. Oh, it's for Becky Granger. Well, why didn't you say so? Thunderclap cider. Favourite tipple. It's a cheeky little vintage, but there's no okay bouquet and just a hint of marker pen. One ninety-nine for three litres. Sold to the lady in uh, the beige coat. Keep the change. Well, thank you. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh hang on, eyelash tinting. Are you sure it's a good idea at this late stage? Well, if it means I don't have to wear mascara, yeah? I'm going to be crying buckets. I don't want to look like a flipping panda in my photos. <laughs> We're a bit tight for time, Becky. It'll take 20 minutes at the salon. Well, just make sure you don't dirty your dress. Oh, I'll be careful. Yet. Go and answer the phone. Strictly speaking, I should have done an allergy test yesterday. Oh, don't worry. I'm tough as all boots, me. I'm not the allergic type. <laughs> <laughs> then again. Oh, hello, love. I was hoping I might catch you. Funny, cos I'd sooner catch rickets than you. Rickets doesn't happen to be contagious. Whatever. I want to put yesterday's misunderstanding behind us. I'd like to come to your wedding. What the hell for? To see Amy in her dress. I won't insult you by pretending. I want you to accept this as a goodwill gesture. Oh. Ta. Ah. Well, it's closest I'll get to a sorry, I suppose. But no, you ain't coming to my wedding, love. I've got some old already. Oh, aye. Haven't you got something borrowed and all? The groom. The two pins I'd like to give you some blue to go with it. But at least one of us is a lady. Can you believe the neck on her? <laughs> What's wrong? Stevie! Oh God. Oh God. I can't let him see me. Falls off there and cracks her head. It counts as not married, and you owe me. You ever considered writing a Mills and Boone? Becky. Hey, did you know two women fought over Steve would be here? Oh yeah, actually, you all know that. That was the culmination <laughs> of an unfortunate chain of events. <laughs> dissed me or got one over on me. They don't matter. That ooch copper loser. Mr. Bonnie in his school. <laughs> Success comes in cans, Becky Granger, and failure comes in cans. And you, my girl, you are going to be a failure. Well, do you know what I am, Mr. Bonnie? Hey! I'm blaming loved! <laughs> <laughs> One minute I'm having a business meeting. Next, I've got some mad bird trying to hustle needles and the soon to be corpse bride on me roof. It's fine, and Haley is not. No, fine. mate, it's not fine at all. Hey! Just the bride! <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is, we're coming down now. 
30 seconds. <laughs> then I'm calling the police. Hey, come back! Karen Becky's not toasted to bride yet. Becky, <laughs> the ceremony is scheduled to begin in five minutes. As it is, we're late. Oh, dear, five minutes. <sighs> when did that happen? You put this forward. No, it were half an hour two minutes ago. <sighs> Come on, Royston, now! He has got to fix me frock yet! <sighs> a number eight should do the trick, but maybe if I could take a number nine as well. Take the lot. Oh. Oh, maybe I should just go and see if they're all right. Then. No. <sighs> oh, to the bride, quick, for luck! To the bride, <laughs> leaving. <laughs> For the free ale, if they're not with tide, you may as well pay up. Not without evidence. For all we know, they could be off in some hotel room, consummating. Ooh. Oh. Oh. What if he stuck this lot up with? Jam. I'll sort him. <laughs> what you need, Madam Landlady, is a forward planner. More thought, more dedication, more man. Or a bit of wood with a seat on top. I'll do it. I wouldn't let her lady or her clumsy doorman. Boyfriend, actually. I'm a clumsy boyfriend. If she'll still have me. Hmm. You'd have lost money if I'd I offered you a bet on that. And on that bar she had some. <laughs> Have I had stout? Yes. Push <laughs> me on best more careful, stout. isn't it? I feel sick. Oh, great. <gasps> Hi. <laughs> come on in here, you two. Well, I'll come in. I'll, uh, I'll take her upstairs. <laughs> Come on, Amy, let's get that dress off you. Yeah. You only have to carry them over the threshold, mate, not up the flaming stairs. <laughs> <clears throat> I can... Oh, hey! Hey! <laughs> hey, I've got something for you. I want to pay for you to have proper photos done, you know, in all your gear. Uh, no, I... I don't have to be on them, unless you let me. Keep it. Well, Haley's wonky snaps will do, will they? She didn't take any. We're not married. Hey? It didn't happen. She, um, didn't feel well. It didn't happen? But she couldn't manage it. Too drunk. Not usually a woman's affliction, that. Nor is losing. Ta. Hey, if you two are betting again, get to Bucky's over no, there. No, it's all right, Mum. Somebody may as well make something out of it. Oh, listen, mate. Sorry, yeah. Ah, oh, don't worry. We'll get married. It'll happen. As soon as Becky realises we're not already. She doesn't know. Listen, your uncle's not around by any chance, is he? What do you mean he's told you? Well, who else has he told? Right. Blanche. I've been looking for you. Please tell me you haven't seen Becky. You mean your wife? Oh, no. She's still your fiancé, isn't she? If you've told her... You mean she still doesn't know? Oh, she doesn't, does she? Wait till I tell the one o'clock club. This even beats the time that Hattie Boothroyd slipped her disc run into the church, went through the ceremony, flat on her back. Man, she is 70. Look, you can tell who you like. You can regale the whole family with it every Christmas if you want. Just please let me tell her first. My lips are sealed. Is your Michelle working today? No, it's her day off. She's at home. Honest, I preferred Michelle to Becky by a mile. Tattoos aside. Is that right? Uh, behind Tracy, obviously. Oh, obviously. 
Sorry, Blanche, is there anything else I can help you with, though? Aim is spending the night at ours now. Is Simon coming or what? Not on a school night. I'm just the pigeon. Oh, OK, I'll, I'll bring him round in a bit. You do that. Captain, be good, eh, hey, and remember when Grandma and Grandad say bed. Pets win prizes. <laughs> oh, pet means bed. Hey, now that is wit. Are you sure you don't want to stay for a cuppa? Oh, no, thanks, Deirdre. I've got to, um... <laughs> well, I just don't want to, to be honest. Why bother making an excuse? Peter, charming. What's your daddy like? My daddy says he's stronger than your daddy. Your daddy's dreaming. And he's bold. Hey, that's enough of that. Yeah, you tell him, kid. Good lad. Just as long as you're looking after yourself. Don't drink, she means. Yeah, 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 I, I'm looking after myself. Right, I will love you and leave you, especially you, Blanche, before you start on me in earnest. All right, bye, Amy. Bye, love. Be good. Thanks. Good night. Good night. He'll be taking them stairs, three at a time, fumbling with his keys. And that... Look, before he joins us, can I ask just what is going on between you two? What are you talking about? Oh, you want me to spell it out for you, do you? Well, all right. For a fact, he's hardly ever here, and you're snapping at him. Nothing's going on. Well, except I'm having to take more and more time off work because I keep having to pick Simon up, which I don't mind doing, but... You mind when he's not doing his share? Well... I suppose I do, when you put it like that. So what is he doing instead? What is it that's keeping him so busy all of a sudden? Research, apparently. About what? Canals. For a friend. Don't ask me who. I've got no idea. A friend who's gonna write a newspaper article about it. You said apparently. Does that mean you don't believe him? No. It means... I'm not believing him or disbelieving him. I just wish he was here a bit more to help look after Simon. That's all. I see. Thank you. I still feel guilty about... Yes, thank you. Oh, he's got a good appetite. Mind, you always had. I think it's why you carry so much weight now. Oh, thanks. OK, shall we get you home now? Is that it, though? Well, I'm not sure, because he was going to a race meeting and uh, he might not be back yet. Well, so why don't you wait till he is? Because I'm taking us round there now. I've got a key. I'll read you a story, shall I? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and where's Ken? He can't still be researching. Well, wherever he is, he's not here. Very seldom is these days. Come on, then, mate. Let's get your coat on. See if your daddy's home yet. <laughs> Is that you? What are you on about, child protection? Hello? What's going on? Oh, it's Peter. He started drinking again. I couldn't leave Simon there with him. If you took every lad away from his parents cos they enjoy a few drinks... Look, there were half a dozen empty bottles of scotch in that kitchen. This is more than a few drinks, Mother. Oh, Ken, where are you? I need you to call me back. I had to bring Simon home. Be Just get home as soon as you can, will you? Look, the, the, the whiskey bottles could have been there for ages. It's just that he's not up to snuff with his recycling. Don't make excuses for him, Mother. He's been lying to us all along. And it's that little lad upstairs we need to be worried about now. I'm just saying you're very quick to judge. I need a drink. I don't suppose the irony of that needs pointing out, does it? <sighs> Where is he? Peter! Simon! What? Simon! What the hell's going on? It's Peter. He's been lying to us. He's drinking again. I'll have to bring Simon back here. 
Did she tell you she threatened to call child protection? You can't take him out like that. He'll catch his death. You agreed to leave him here. Yeah, well, I've changed my mind. No, well, someone, please tell me what on earth's going on. He is drinking again. Heavily, which explains the gash on his head. How do you know? Or oh, what about the empty whiskey bottles, eh? Half a dozen of them at least drowned at his flat. I'm not drunk now, am I? At least let me get a blanket to put over the lad. How many is it this time, Peter? Well, it's not as many as you two from the smell of booze coming off you both. How many have you had tonight, Deirdre? Oh, I've had a couple of glasses of wine, but... Yeah? So me, the lad's dad who's completely sober, is going to leave him with his grandparents who are off-cut. Have I got that right, have but I? that's not... Ken, do something! Just stay away from us, both of you. Thank you, Blanche. And I'm sorry about all this. I am. She kept dropping the... I don't know how you can be so relaxed about this. I'm as worried as you are. Oh, really? I didn't see you putting up much of a fight when he took Simon. We've got to give Peter a chance. We've given him a chance. More than one. If you'd seen him when he was trying to throw me out of the flat... Peter wouldn't hurt you, or the lad. You didn't see the look in his eye. And where were you anyway till so late? I was phoning and phoning. At the library, like I said. Got a bar there now, have they? Well, I had a few drinks with a friend I've been doing the research for afterwards. Must have left my phone on silent. Well, if you took half as much interest in your family as you do about the Weatherfield Canal system... Well, it came as soon as I saw you'd called. Well, you might as well have stopped out for all the good you did when you did eventually arrive. That's not fair. Oh, I'm going for a cigarette. And I'm off to bed with me May Binchy. She's worried, that's all, Ken. She looks at Amy and sees all the trouble Tracy brought her. And now Peter. I know. I'll talk to him tomorrow. If Deirdre's right, Peter needs a lot more than talk. Banging the food down like that. At this rate, we're going to have to get them table legs reinforced. Are you going to the library again today? Oh, he's never away from the place lately. They're going to start charging him rent soon. Not sure yet. If you do, will you get me the latest Marion Keys? She's ever so good at writing. Now it's your father. Right, right, yeah. If I go, I'll get it. And, um, perhaps if you get a moment in your busy schedule, you could check on your grandson. Hush my mouth. Forget I said anything. Deirdre, please. I mean, like you said, I'm not even related to him, am I? Oh, for goodness sake! Got to have a moment of peace in my own home? Oh, where we go again. Another day in paradise. Having a late dinner. Plays havoc with me pipes. I wouldn't mind, but he hasn't even rung. Selfish beggar. That's him all over. He'll be the one to blame if I'm up half the night with a jippy tummy. Well, his tea's ruined, and he needn't think I'm cooking him anything else. Serves him right. Hope it chokes him. Do you think he's had a word with Peter? It's like he said. All that's none of our business, apparently. I know. Doesn't stop me worrying, though, does it? Wednesday. I didn't realise you were keeping count. That is the last time I had the first bath. I don't see what the difference is. I always clean the bath when I'm finished. Oh, it takes more than a quick whiz round with a flannel to clean the bath. I use the squirty stuff and the proper sponge, and I rinse. You won't find a scummy ring after I've been in there. I've lost count of the number of times I have to clean that bath again before I can use it. That's Kenneth. He's the guilty party when it comes to bathroom hygiene. Probably a lot else besides. It's him you want to have a go at, not me. Oh, nice to have the chance. And then she accuses me of having no faith in her. Well, she's right. Oh. Enjoy that. Heaven. In that case... Oh, I'd uh, wait a while if I were you. I think I used all the hot water. What do you want all that water for? 
You were having a wash, not training to swim the channel. I like to soak. You mean sit in dirty water. Well, at least it's me own dirt. Oh, that'll be Ken. Tell him. Hello? Simon? Grandma, what's our address? Um, 19 Street. What do you want to know your address for? For the fireman, thanks, bye. Simon? We am. We am. Simon! What's going on? That was Simon. I don't know. Simon. Grandma, I'm trying to make a phone call. My rabbit won't wake up. He, he's your dad there? Is, is Peter there? He's asleep. I tried to wake him up, but he must be really tired. Sorry, Grandma, gotta go. The smoke's getting worse. No, Simon, stay on the phone. <sighs> There's a fire at Peter's. You stay here in case he rings back. Deirdre. What about the Robinson? You know what? You shouldn't do that. The bookies is on fire. Have you got a phone? Call the fire brigade. Yeah, of course. Simon and Peter are in there. Come on. Yeah, fire, please. Roisman Street, Weatherfield. The flat above the bookies, there's smoke coming out. Yeah, I think there's people trapped inside. Simon called me. He, he said Peter's asleep and he can't wake him up. Simon! Peter! Can you hear me? It'll be all right, Peter. Oh, Peter! Peter! I should go to the hospital. Will you ring Ken and tell him what's happened? He's it, it, not got his phone on. I don't know where he is. No, no, no. You go. <laughs>